So good morning or afternoon, depending on your time zone. And uh, welcome to the discussion of chapter 20, is it 20, 21? 21, I think. 21, um, our words. Vicki, are you talking to us? No, I think she's she's on the phone. Um, Vicky, Vicky is on the road heading back to New Jersey again. And uh, so she, I don't know how much she'll be able to actually participate, but uh, she is she is my guiding light in this because as I expressed in the email regarding this uh, particular chapter, it's this one was a, a tough one for me. Uh, I, I didn't quite get it. And so... Um, I called Vicky earlier this morning and we talked a little, little bit about it. And I, because of that guidance, I've decided I'm going to, we're going to go with this at a slightly different way than we normally do. Um, let me see, share screen here. This is, um, I don't know if anyone else gets this is uh, the an email that Rod Shelberg, Dr. Shelberg, uh, sends out every every day, um, and it is uh, contains quotes from uh, uh, I can't remember what is what's this guy's name. Come on, help me, someone. Um, Boy, I'm I, my it's hope, good. my mind yeah. is my mind is just turned off completely. I, I, it's fairly <sighs> small print, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to read it. Um, okay, go, go ahead. Yeah, um, I think it's Joe Goldsmith. Thank you. Ah, I could that the way the the name was not coming into my head at all. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I'm going to he. He usually sends out two sections. One is uh, a larger section than a smaller, what he called, they call the morsel. So I'm going to read both of them uh, and then fold that into what we're going to be discussing today. We do not claim that a, person, that a person's human form and characteristics are the Christ. No person in his human identity is spiritual, perfect, healthy or wealthy, but we disregard the appearance of his humanhood and through spiritual discernment, behold the Christ looking out of his eyes silently, sacredly, secretly. So we are not looking at when we, when we behold our brother, our sibling in Christ to see that sibling correctly. We do not see them in the body that they are walking around in. We understand that what they truly are is the Christ looking out of the, of the eyes that we seem to be seeing. We see him from the mystical standpoint after the manner of the Christ, knowing that whoever he is, he is presenting his Christhood for our acknowledgement. So every time we look at our brother in Christ, our sibling in Christ, we are looking at that which is being presented to us as the Christhood. And we understand that no matter what that appearance may be, whether it be uh, uh, a face with a, a gambler, a prostitute, a sick or dying person, always they are presenting their Christhood to us for recognition and identification. And this is how healing is a, is is happening by seeing the true Christ, not what we are, what our what our eyes are seeing in the body of another person. Every time some person comes to us trying to convince us that he has a sick body, an empty purse, or is living a sinful life, we learn not to try to change the evil into good not to pray that God take away the negative appearances and restore the positive. Rather, we ignore the appearance, look right through it, 
and see that behind the eyes of every individual is the Christ. This is how true healing occurs. We do not see the body. We do not see the symbol of the body. We do not see the symbol of all the words that strung together seem to describe that body. We ignore them. We throw away all those particular definitions and we instead see the Christhood. And then the little morsel at the bottom says, in this work, we are not so much healers as we are expanders of consciousness, opening consciousness to the nature of our true being. If you have developed one bit of discernment, you will look right through the human picture and you'll say, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And this is how healing occurs. We take away all the symbols of the, all the words that we think we need to describe anything in this world. And we just, we use those final words as the definition for everything that we are presented with. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Okay, so now that, now that we've covered that, let's go to the... Um, Let's go to the uh, the chapter for today, and we'll start with, there we go, what is the role of words in healing? Well, the role of words in healing is not a zip, zilch, not a thing. Words don't have anything to do with the actual healing whatsoever. Strictly speaking, words play no part at all in healing. The motivating factor is prayer or asking. Prayer and asking, we use words for those actions. But the words themselves are not what we're actually asking for if we are asking for true healing. All the words that we string together in prayers for whatever it seems to be that we're asking for, have nothing to do with what is truly to be healed. What is truly to be healed is our thoughts of separation. And the fact that the atonement is presented to us as that being that we are willing to forgive what we think we are seeing and instead accept what is truly there. What you ask for, you receive. But this refer refers to the prayer of the heart, not to the words you are using to pray. The prayer of the heart is that which we address to the Holy Spirit. The prayer of the heart is not what we think we are asking God for. God doesn't know what we're asking for in words. In fact, there's there, there it is in the next sentence. Sometimes the words and the prayers are contradictory. Sometimes they agree. It doesn't matter. God does not understand words, for they are made up, made by separated minds to keep them in the illusion of separation. All these words that I'm speaking right now, all the words we see on this page and every other page of every other book and every other thing sound that we are hearing they are all sounds and sights in separation for true we truly are words can be helpful particularly for the beginner in helping concentration and facilitating the exclusion or at least the control of extraneous thoughts they are tools which we can use in this illusion to help us understand this illusion. Let us not forget, however, that words are but symbols of symbols. They are twice removed from reality. Now, the symbols of symbols, and we're going to talk about that a little more in, in a later paragraph, but just remember that the, the symbols of symbols are asking us 
to put a wall up between that which we truly are and that which we think we need to communicate. We don't need words to communicate because we are all one. There is no barrier to communication between myself as I truly am, as God created me, and the rest of the sonship. All of those barriers are strictly the barriers that I have created to think that I am somehow separate from God. Remember that. Symbols of symbols. Unless a specific referent does occur to the mind, to the mind in conjunction with the word, the word has little or no practical meaning and thus cannot help the healing process. We can use the words as tools in this world to picture an event, an action, uh, an emotion, something which we can use as a tool to understand what the healing might be here in this world, in this dream. But it, they do not they do not accurately define what the healing is itself. The healing, the prayer of the heart, does not really ask for concrete things. I skipped I skipped a no 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 I okay. Yeah, the prayer of the heart, in other words, my communication with the Holy Spirit asking for clarity and for understanding for what is truly being, what I truly need for healing is not asking for concrete things. It always requests some kind of experience, the specific things asked for being the bringers of the desired experience in the opinion of the asker. In other words, in the mind, in the ego mind, that which I think is separate from God. The words, then, are symbols of the things asked for, but the things themselves but stand for the experience that are hoped for. Those things which we are thinking we are asking for in a prayer of healing are nothing more than experiences that we wish to have in this world, that we hope for in this world, but stand completely apart from what truly needs to be healed. And the only thing that truly needs to be healed is my understanding that I have somehow desired to be separate from God. Not that that is true, only that that was my desire and which which put me here. <clears throat> okay. Um, I I don't know why I've been doing it the way that I've been doing it here, but I want to stop there and ask if anyone has any thoughts about any of that or any questions. Um, remember, Vicky is here too. Hopefully Vicky can, can help me as well. But does anyone have any thoughts about what we've just been talking about? Baraka, I think you gave the most exquisite explanation of the whole thing. Maybe I've ever heard. It was beautiful. It was ex exactly the situation. You expressed it with grace and exquisite perfection. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Vicki. Um, thank you. Your, your, your guidance earlier this morning certainly did help that. Uh, thank you. I don't but, know if you needed it. You got it. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't. I What I just said, what I was just talking about, I wasn't there this morning. All I, But I did understand That's that. That's what I, a miracle is, Baraka. Yeah, yes. A, um, thank you. A holy a instant. To the miracle. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I need to, uh, I need to wet the whistle. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm. I'm. Is anyone else? Please talk. Say what you're thinking. Tell me. Tell me what's going through your mind. How. How. How does your prayer of healing? 
how, how is your prayer of healing changed or reflected by what we've just spoken and read? It showed me that we are joined in one mind because you and Vicki work together and we're all here benefiting from that coming together. <laughs> I, I, I you, must Brenda. thank you, Brenda, and and I must say that that for the last twenty something years in this temporal existence, Vicky and I have been linked as one in the mind of Christ in a way that constantly surprises me every day as it unfolds. I am very very thankful for Vicky. Thank you so much. Thank you for Me too, thank, thank, thank you, you Holy Spirit. Thank, thank you. you and thank you for bringing David to the island because none of this would have been possible if it weren't for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm. Okay, I think I've got my whistle back. Um, let's go back to the share screen and go to the there we go. Go to the next paragraph. Now, this is the one you can see the whole thing is highlighted in blue. This was where I really I my my brain fell apart when reading this. This is a very dense paragraph. So uh I'm gonna give this a shot and see see what comes up this time. Okay. Um the prayer for things of this world will bring experiences of this world. I I get that now. We are if I'm asking for things to be healed in this world, the only thing I'm going to get if that prayer is answered at all is that it's going to be something in this world. It's not going to be a true healing which is <laughs> awakening of to my of my mind to who I truly am as God created me it's going to be something else it's going to be something that has a beginning a middle and an end it, there is no infinite love involved with that um I now remember I am here in this world out picturing projecting onto the screen of my world, what I want to see and what I want to learn. So if something happens in this world, like my conversation with Vicki this morning, uh, even that, when I, when I see that happening, it is because I have asked it to be there. Sometimes it shows up as I wanted it to be. Sometimes it doesn't show up as I want it to be. Fortunately, my conversation with Vicki this morning was what I was open to having. But there have been other times where I'm going, you know, gosh, I wish I had the five toes on my right foot left back on again. I really do. <laughs> and I could just stare at my foot all day long. And until I realize that who I am as God created me has nothing to do with the five toes on my right foot, I'm, I'm going to be completely disappointed or even if those sh those toes do show up, it's not going to make my life here in this world any better. Because my life in this world being better is completely um, re recognized on the idea that I am somehow unhappy with what's going on here. It is impossible that the prayer of the heart remain unanswered in the perception of one who, who asks. If he asks for the impossible, if he wants what does not exist or seeks for illusions in his heart, all of this becomes his own. The power of his decision offers it to him as he requests. Herein lie heaven and hell. Hell and heaven. If this world, if if heaven is where I truly exist with God, and this is where I think I'm separate from God, 
then this must be in the definition of this word here, this symbol of a symbol on this page, this must be hell. Because everything is an attack until I forgive it. Everything is an attack until I see the atonement, the, the miracle, the holy instant happening before me on the screen in front of me. All of those things that I see as being of God will not be here in this world. They will be a symbol of a symbol but they will not be the true love of God because it will not be eternal. It will not be infinite. It will not be unconditional love that my father offers to me by just simply by giving me my existence in the act of creation. The sleeping son of God has but this power left to him. It is enough. The sleeping son of God has but this power left to him. It is enough. His words do not matter. Only the word of God has any meaning because it symbolizes that which has no human symbols at all. Wow. Only the word of God has any meaning because it symbolizes that which has no human symbols at all. The Holy Spirit alone understands what this word stands for, and this too is enough. So, how does the word of God reach into this level of existence, this illusion? It reaches in through the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit does not attack with that. The Holy Spirit only answers what I am offering to it. And that what I, that which I offer to the Holy Spirit cannot be in the form of human symbols because that does not translate into heaven at all. The only the word of God has any meaning. And the word of God, which is capitalized, is more powerful than any small cap, a small letter word that we can speak here in this in this particular le level of existence. Because it symbolizes that which has no human symbols at all. So the act of healing, the act, the the words that we use for the true act of healing must be that which is the word of God only. Unconditional love, peace, tranquility, all the characteristics that we talked about way back in chapter three about the characteristics of the teacher of God. All those characteristics strung together starting with trust and going all the way through mindfulness, all of those characteristics strung together are in human symbols, in symbols in this illusion, the closest thing that comes to the word of God. Because it is what we strive for to be the word of God. The only And the only thing that can be represented here in this illusion. The Holy Spirit alone understands what this word stands for. And this too is enough. If we ask Holy Spirit for the existence of that word of God and what it looks like here in this world, the Holy Spirit will present that to us, but it won't show up as anything in form. It will not. Healing that the Holy Spirit ex offers us does not show up in anything that can be interpreted as being in this world. Because it is, it is the word of God. And the word of God 
is unconditional, undefinable. The words do not matter. Only the word of God has any meaning. The words do not matter. I think I'm complete with that paragraph. I, I don't, nothing else is coming to me at this moment. Anybody else have any other thoughts about that? Please, please join in. It's a, it's a tough, it's a tough one. It's very dense because it is using the one thing that we're, we're being taught doesn't work. <laughs> We're using words to describe this, which is seems it's blowing my mind. It's absolutely blowing my mind. But by understanding that and understanding that the mind that is being blown by this is not in any way, shape or form associated with who I am as as God created me. As long as I understand that that mind that I'm that's trying to comprehend this is not does it doesn't matter if I comprehend it or not. All that matters is that I understand that God's love is unconditional and has no barriers. Then the only barrier that I see to God's love is that which I myself have placed there. And Holy Spirit, I ask you now to please help me remove the barriers to God's love. Please, let me see the unconditional love. Let me experience the holy instant, which will awaken to me the idea that I am as God created me. And where did that desire come from? In the Bible, it says God gives us the desires. Now, we can substitute love or or Holy Spirit there, the desires of our hearts. So there, there is an energy that's pulling us to want to be. Yes. Just to be. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, 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 is, it is that recognition, that little tiny thing that has been planted in the back of my head that Holy Spirit lights up and says, this could be you. You can, you can experience this. You are this. All you have to do is just forget everything else. Forget the idea that you somehow screwed up. Forget the idea that you have somehow made an illusion, made a re that you have somehow made real the idea that you are separate from God. I have made real only in my own mind. And that is the that is the mind that this little tiny light in the back, the Holy Spirit is lighting up. Saying, this is your root. This is who you truly are. This is the Holy Spirit speaking to you with that little tiny light. And all I have to do is just open the door and that light just shines in. Now, what what i what i see in that is that by picturing this entire universe this finite universe which is there trying to describe my separation from god what i see is that all i have to do is change my judgment of that world in fact release the judgment and understand that all of that is a reflection of the illusion. All of that is the idea that I and my brother are one. And that it is my responsibility to see my brother and I, my sibling in Christ and I, as being the true creation of God that there is whatever whatever these eyes and these ears and these and everything else in my senses here whatever else i seem to be seeing or experiencing is cannot be 
It cannot be true because what is true is the love of God. And so if I see, what was that in that previous paragraph, uh, a prostitute, uh, a lawyer, you know, anything, I was seeing anything, or eight other people in a Zoom room with me. If I forgive myself and forgive, forgive me, the idea that I am somehow separate in distance and in space and in, in everything else from all of you, I forgive that and ask Holy Spirit instead for the vision that is truly the vision of Christ. Then I don't see anything before me except Christ love, except the mind of Christ. And that is the only true act of healing. Healing five toes on my foot or cancer in my throat or a sick gallbladder or all the other things that I've been to the hospital for, none of those changed who I truly am as God created me Not because none of those in their original condition changed me from who I am, who I am as God created me. None of them. Any other thoughts? Anything? You seem to be on a bit of a roll here. Okay. Well, let's go back to, let's go back to share screen. <clears throat> Sorry. So, is the teacher of God then to avoid the use of words in his teaching? No. No, indeed. In fact, no, indeed. Exclamation point. There are many who must be reached through words, being as yet unable to hear in silence. The teacher, and this is what this is what the storefront is for. This is what why we sit in the storefront and we wait for our brother, our sibling in Christ to come to us and say, there must be a better way. I don't see it. How, there must be a better way. Talk to me about this. Tell me what's going on. There are many who must be reached through words, being as yet unable to hear in silence. So if someone asks me for a healing, whether it be for themselves or a relationship with a, with a sibling in Christ or uh, something that, you know, their, their purse is not full enough, their job is not good enough, all those things. We can, we, I can sit there and just stare at them and go, you are the holy created child of God. And I can think that all, but that's not why this Christ, sibling in Christ has come to me. This sibling in Christ has come to me thinking that there are words that are going to heal whatever they see as being a lack. The teacher of God must, however, learn to use words in a new way. Gradually, he learns how to let his words be chosen for him by ceasing to decide for himself what he will say. And this is exactly what I've been experiencing for the last 36 minutes. This process is a merely a special case of the lesson in the workbook that says, I will step back and let him lead the way. And that is lesson number, I think it's 155, is it? Yeah, lesson 155. I will step back and let him lead the way. And that capital H, him, is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit gets its guidance from God and offers it to us as the bridge between myself and heaven. The teacher of God accepts the words which are offered him and gives as he receives. In other words, no editing, no trying to find an alternate meaning. Let the words come in and let the words flow out. He does not control the direction of his speaking. He listens and hears and speaks. Listens and hears 
and speaks. A major hindrance in this aspect of his learning is the teacher of God's fear about the validity of what he hears. Yeah, I think we've all experienced that. Am I supposed to say that really? Is that what this is all about? <laughs> and what he hears may indeed be quite startling. It may also seem to be quite irrelevant to the presented problem he, as he perceives it and may, in fact, confront the teacher with a situation that appears to be very embarrassing to him. I have the foggiest idea what I'm talking about here. But as long as I know that I'm speaking what I'm hearing, as long as that is coming through truly, and I do not feel an a, a barrier between what I'm hearing and what I'm saying, then I've got nothing to worry about. All of these judgments that have, all, all these are judgments that have no value. They are my own, coming from a shabby self-perception which I alone would leave behind. My shabby self-perception there it is, folks. There's there's the true there's the true judgment right there. Shabby self perception is how the ego perceives what's coming in, what's what's being said in the in the word. The words that are coming in are far wiser than my own. God's teachers have God's word behind their symbols. So all these symbols that we are stringing together, that we are asking to be, to be coming to us so that we can in turn turn that over to our sibling in Christ who has come to the storefront. All of those words have God's word behind them. If we are truly listening, if we are turning off the shabby self-perception, which I would leave behind. God's teachers have God's word behind their symbols. And he himself, God himself, gives to the words they gives to the words they use the power of his spirit, raising them from meaningless symbols to the call of heaven itself. If I am truly listening, if I tr am truly turning off the shabby self-perception self and letting the words flow from God through Holy Spirit to myself, I am raising the meaningless symbols that I seem to be speaking to the call of heaven itself. And it's not my judge, it's not my place to judge whether I'm hitting that or not. Just all I have to do is just say, Baraka, get the hell out of the way. Stand aside and let this happen. Let this happen as God would have it happen. Let this happen as Holy Spirit says it will happen. By trusting that that is the process and not putting even the tiniest little trust in my shabby self-perception. Okay. So, the ego has, has some serious thinking to do about this. And then I've got to remember that the ego cannot think at this level at all. I cannot think with the ego mind and understand what I've what we've truly been having here. This is beyond ego mind. This is beyond ego think. This is beyond shabby self-deception. This is self-perception. This is where my mind as God created it, hooks into the mind of God. I will be as God created me. 
because that is my will, because that is God's will. Okay, come on. Someone, give me something. Come on. Give me feedback. What do you think? What What's going on here? Yay, what's... yay, Baraka. Oh, <laughs> Thank... my good Lord, brother, you have, you have, you have given us the marshal mm -hmm. of, of God's grace coming down to us through the filters in whatever way we can bloody well hear it. Lordy, Lordy, and Mary, they want us home. The banquet set. Party's ready. Teddy's there. We, uh, yeah, holding each other's hands along the way. We're stronger. We care. <clears throat> we share. Hey, Vicki. Yes, Baraka. Do you have a prayer for us? Oh, I just have a prayer of gratitude, Baraka. Holy Spirit and Jesus, our dear brother, thank you so much for opening our minds together as one to the clarity of what is true, that we belong to love, and there's never been an opposite to that. And that it is our vision and our experience of seeing ourselves as only this spirit, only the light that is healing us in this moment now and bringing healing to this whole, our whole sonship in and out of time. We thank you for these moments where we're gathered together here in time as a little family because these moments are so precious and they truly light us all up as one. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. And to everyone here, Baraka and you and everyone, greatest gratitude for your devotion, your dedication, and willingness to let go of all ideas, all ideas except the ones given us in the peace that is within us, that is us. When, when those words are expressed that come from that peace, they shine throughout time. So thank you, dear God. Thank you, Baraka. And thank you, everyone here. What a wonderful day. Amen. God bless Amen. us all. <laughs> thank you. Amen. Amen. Namaste. Namaste. Hey, women. <laughs> Okay. Um I I can't see where this is going to go next. So I think I think we probably have just about beat this into submission. <laughs> uh our next how are healing and atonement related? That, I, well, I hold on, Baraka. Hold oh on, yes, Baraka. yes. I'm pretty sure with all this incredibly delightful information that has been brought forth to us today that we might want to just digest it a bit sit sit a bit of while sit all right let's together and just see what comes up i'm pretty sure there are some other minds that have a thought of god and if not I, I I love looking at our faces. <laughs> let let us let us be one with one. Holding holding the thought of the holy instant being here, right here, right now. Oh yeah. Here we are. Energized. Awake ready knock 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 god here i am trick or treat 
<laughs> well, for myself, um, I don't hear, but I just speak. And I there must be hearing going on somewhere because what I experience is my heart expanding as somebody I feel their their reception of what I say. And so it's it's like you can't analyze it, you just have to experience it. And I think that's what we need to let go of is trying to always analyze everything because like you said, it's just symbols of symbols. Mm -hmm. And it, then it brings me to question, well, the story of Jesus was a story too, because it came into this illusion. But is it real? You know, there's got to be a particle of it is real. Um, so it makes me wonder more. <laughs> it's like, and well, makes me, you know, really understand. I don't understand. <laughs> well, what what seems to be real? If it, removing all of these, all of the silly self perceptions, just taking that all away and whittling it down to what is real. That is that is what has accompanied us into this crazy illusion. What is real? What is eternal? What has no beginning and no end? And what has what is there when the blocks to love are removed? Is it the story of Jesus? That that's fine. We, there's nothing wrong with that being part of the a real love but again the symbols that we use to tell those stories those are the interpretations that we put in our mind but removing all of the interpretations and just allowing the love to be there that's what's real and that's the beginning that's the first step on the bridge back to heaven mm -hmm. And so I don't need a I don't need a name Jesus. I don't need a story about a bunch of guys sitting at a table drinking wine and eating bread. I don't need all of that to understand that the love that stands behind that story is what is true. Because I have asked that love to come into my world to come onto my screen, to teach me. And the love, my, which is my willingness to be taught, is that which is real. Love. Love, only love. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, including the, all the understanding of my silly self-perception. Self all of that is what is real, what can be real in this world. So how do I how do I experience that story of Jesus? If I experience it without any threat whatsoever, without any ulterior motive whatsoever, just being the story of love, then that is the love that I place here in this world by telling that story of Jesus. And there's nothing wrong with that because it answers the question, who am I? Uh, I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> that is, that's, that's, that blows my mind what I just said, I think. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and watch the recording on this one because this is, yes, Brenda. Um, I was just saying, thinking of, um, I've been watching The Chosen. Yeah. I'm on episode two. And when I read that paragraph, I just saw the face of like Jesus from that movie. And he just, his truth just shines out of him. And he doesn't do anything. He just accepts everyone. And uh, just much like, the folks here do and uh so he's becoming more evident in our world right now and that's pretty cool yeah yeah mm -hmm. there was a um I, i'm i'm gonna i received a uh 
uh, an email from does anyone know who Glenn Hoveman is? He's uh he's the publisher of the uh of Choose Only Love and a bunch of other stuff and he he runs a uh, a weekly uh Zoom room uh let me let me let me go to the I'm going to go to the uh my mail here boom and boom and boom okay I uh, hopefully I don't know okay can everyone see that picture of the age of the heart is that showing up on the screen yes okay this is a new book that has just been published <laughs> by Glenn's publishing house uh, and it is a channel document received by Sebastian Blakesley. Um, Some of see. them rock and know Sebastian because he came to a conference call, a step in the heaven call. Right, right. And he, yes, he, he also... um. He also is the source of the of the book. Uh, yeah. Uh, the the books. The, choose the, only love. Choose only love. Right. Okay. So and anyway, uh, I I don't know if you can read the um. If you can read the the, uh, this is this is from Glenn. I am thrilled to tell you that a remarkable new message from Jesus, the age of the heart, the birth of a new heaven and a new earth, has been published. It was received through Sebastian. A quantum leap is occurring in the history of humankind, a movement from the age of reason to the age of the heart. Many of us sense this to be true. This leap is well underway, is divinely ordained, is unstoppable, stoppable, and we are essential actors in this drama. The Age of the Heart explains how an enormous transformation that will hugely impact everyone and every social system is occurring both individually and globally. It explains the turmoil, be, turmoil being experienced both personally and socially, which is but the birth pangs of a universal transmit, transmutation. The Reflection of Changing Consciousness it explains how elevated consciousness is ushering in an era of unprecedented splendor, the living expression of the love we really are. And when, you might ask, is this to take place? The book includes the revelation to Sebastian of the timeline of this divine plan, which is much speedier than you might expect. Uh, I'm going to forward this email to our our email mailing list so that you can get the link and everything else um as to where the you know what's happening with all that so uh well i'll get that i'll i'll put that on when i when i send out the recording and thank you Baraka, for, yeah. for sharing that thank you yeah because I, no matter no matter what how it seems to be coming to us, whether it be the the TV series The Chosen, or a book, a story in the Bible, or anything else, if it's if it is the love that we sense, it is because it is the love that we are putting into it. <laughs> Excuse me, I am as God created me, <laughs> and therefore. My love that I put into this world is that is the extension of God's creation through me, through Holy Spirit, through me into this world. That is my job. That is my function as the teacher of God. So I will send that on to everyone and you can, uh, there's even a link to the Amazon book and if you go to the the hard copy version, uh, paperback or hard copy, uh, you can hit a link that says, uh, I'll look inside and you can actually read the first 24, 25 pages of the book free of charge. And then you can decide to buy the book or not. And it's also in ebook, uh, electronic book uh, for firm, uh, form as well. 
So thank you for uh, thank you for reminding me about that. I wanted to I did want to extend that information to you all as well. <sighs> hmm. Not to that, let's do excuse me. Hey, Baraka. Yes. While you're looking for what you're looking for, um, I would just want to say something. Please. Okay, so I just want to say thank you to the group um, for being here and for sharing so beautifully. And I, um, I'm not always able to join by video, but um, my, I, I just wanted to mention that I've been kind of. Oh, I don't know, I guess tested a little bit more in these last few days. My husband is gone for about three weeks. I don't want to be where he is. It just, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm just good where I am. But because I am alone, I think I have more, um, you know, of a tendency to go into some pretty dark spaces uh, that apparently I need to visit. <laughs> And then I had this kind of thought that every time I visit the dark place, well, I have made some commitment to stay alive rather than to opt out, you know. And so with that commitment to stay alive, every time I'm tempted to go into the dark space, it reinforces because I have to find, I do have to, you know, either that or I'd have to kill myself. I have to find, you know, the love. And so this is helpful. This is love, like, from the outside. And I appreciate it. We are all here for you. And anytime you need us, please reach out to us. Please. Uh, thank you. I did and i am now Good. and i'll be okay after we're all done then i'll go exercise i already did my floor exercises i'm still doing the things that i know i need to do right but don't forget to do the one thing that is most important love and drink water yes, I and, do. Drink, <laughs> and, and drink water yes because we Mary we, we, starts singing too do you have a song, Mary? Mary? I do. I want to sing to just, us now. No, I don't think I should do it now. But well, I come mean, on, I, honey, why not? Be, oh, be a bird. I don't Wait, know. We good. We'll sing with well, you. I'll we'll sing with you, Mary. <laughs> well, yeah, you can just, give us a note, and we'll join in. Yeah. No. Well, let me just explain. It. I did sing yesterday for many hours because I I wrote a song about 19 years ago. It was the very first song I ever wrote with words, and um, I've been lately just kind of understanding it, you know, to a point where now I can sing it. I could sing it for you if you want me to. Yeah, we please. Do yeah, please. 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 Oh, all right. I'll do. Don't that. don't make don't make don't make us beg. That's not very nice. We are to go to my piano, but <laughs> I have to do it on the electric piano because my piano Bring is too much. Bring us the music. <laughs> and then I can't hold the phone, so I'll set it down. But okay, I don't know. okay. Tell me, just shout if it doesn't, and I'll stop. 
We, we hear right. you. We hear you. Oh. Okay. It's a, you know, it's a song that I wrote when I was so depressed. And I, it was a moment of surrender. I pictured Jesus, you know, I cried on the bike path and I pictured Jesus and I, I just said, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So anyway, this, when I walked home, the words came to me and then the music came to me, but I haven't really ever been able to sing it until now. And I think what I'm singing is the harmony. There's, I'm playing the melody on my right hand. So I don't know. We'll see. If I can. Okay. Okay, here goes. It's a little intro. Is that too loud? Yeah. Uh, no. every, everyone else, please turn off your microphones. Please, please mute everyone except for Mary. Okay. Oh, now I feel uh, on the spot. <laughs> okay, but okay, I'll try it. You tell me if it's not good, okay? Oh, it's called No Place I'd Rather Be. <clears throat> I was waiting such a long, long time. I didn't even know what I was waiting and you were waiting such a long, long time for me to find my way to you. Sometimes I was afraid and insecure. I guess I was searching for a cure. Then I found my way to your door. Now I'm not afraid of enemy. Now that you are walking by my side, there is no need for me to hide. Now that you are walking down the street, there is no place I'd rather be. I didn't even know that. I only knew I didn't feel at home, but I was looking for till I found my way to your home. And now I'm not alone anymore. I have found the key and the burden you hold. You were there and waiting patiently as I took your hand. You set me free. Now that you are working by my side, there is no need for me to run. Now that you are working next to me, there is no place I can. You help me know the truth of being. You help me feel the love. Oh, now you help me know the sweetness within me. You help me see the love of That was okay. Beautiful. Oh, it's thank beautiful, you, beautiful, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mary. It thank was you. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. There is Brendan. no place I would rather be. Yeah, it was so amazing because when me. I went out on the walk, I just wanted to be dead and I wanted my son to be dead with me. But then after I gave it up, and said, I can't do it. 
then it was such a miracle to walk away and be able to say, you know, now there's like no place I'd rather be. Then, and it's taken me 19 years, you know, and I still don't really get it, but I'm closer than I was. Well, hopefully we're walking that with you. Thank you. Mary, yeah. it, it has taken us decades. It has taken us thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands <laughs> of lifetimes to get to this place. There is no <laughs> yeah. other place I would rather be than with thee. So light up your heart, my darling. You are marvelous. You are marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. And the energy you are putting out to your family, to yourself, to your soul, you're polishing that mirror around the Christ frame. Sparkle, 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 darling. Sparkle, yeah. sparkle. Come to the table, have a glass of holy water. It's bubbly. It's cool. It's refreshing. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you for opening up to us. You are Thank you. an incredible human being. Thank you for inviting me and oh. for accept accepting me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how, how could we not? <laughs> you are us. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I have to remember. Yes. Thank you, Judy. You said it so perfectly. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Are you in New Jersey yet? I I think I am. I think <laughs> I just crossed into New Jersey. From All New right. York. Have you have you passed the hundred person mark yet? I, I, I think I, I have. I think we did that. Is it time to take to your bed? No, that was, I did that. I had to do that a moment last night. <laughs> but I woke up um, home again. And this call has been wonderful. I'll just say very quickly, there was a little episode with my granddaughter. And it knocked me out. And I literally had to take to my bed right away. And I did. And I got frightened. And I was believing in the form. And all I could do is, Mary, just what you're doing. Here I am, Jesus. I'm all yours. You know, I'm, my mind is going nuts. But I'm putting my attention on you. And I'm holding on to my life right now. I love you. Oh. Please, thank you for helping me. And I woke up at peace, recognizing what Baraka said earlier. Oh, my God. I forgot. All I have to do is see that we're all one in Christ's light. That's who she is. I am. We all are. And I was back to the experience of it, not just the words of it. So that's where I'm at. And I, um, Baraka and everyone here, this meeting was so, oh my gosh, just so full of presence and love and joy. And I can, I, I, I just thank you. I thank you all. Judy, thanks for asking. Hey, Vicki. Mary, thank you. Vicki, yeah. thank you for mm -hmm. speaking up like that because I always think Vicki's got it all. She's got it handled. Oh, no, Her no, no. Is full. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't no, need no, my no. cup of sugar. <laughs> oh, no. I need, she doesn't I'm so need grateful. my porch swing. Oh, yes, I do. I need all oh. of us. Oh, I, honey. It, it, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You, you bring your cauldron to my porch swing. What a party we'll have. <laughs> okay. I'll Mary, be here tonight, Judy. Mary, if, yes. if I, if I yes, might, uh, please remember that if the screen is completely blank and you don't see another human face anywhere around, you are still not alone. You are Thank still you. not alone. God loves you. And we are all the extension of that love. So all you have to do is remember that God loves you. And boom, there we all are. Thank okay? you, Baraka. Oh, thank you. 
Thank you. We love you so much. Thank I you love for, you all too. Thank you for shining your light so bright. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Be because you are the love of God. Right. All right. I have to remember that. Please do. Yeah. Please do. Okay, everyone say goodbye. I'm going to turn the switch here. I love you. Right. Thank you, Rob Hardy. Love you. Love you. Yes. It's never yeah. over, Judy. Going never home. over. Uh, okay. It's like a celebration. All right. Oh, who's des well. who's the next? Vicki, you're designated driver, right? <laughs> I'm designated what, Baraka? You're designated driver. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love you Everybody all. Knows she's love so you all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love you all. Thank you, Come everybody. Thanks, Thanks Baraka. everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you so much. Thank you.